All right, live in 30 seconds. Live in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Good evening, everyone, and happy Travel Tuesday today. If we began to think about traveling again. I'm excited about what God is doing, even among us this evening. We're excited about what's happening uh, today, and, and we're just excited about those of you who are watching and have expressed your frustration as regards to retirement and being disappointed with that 401k that you had. And uh, we just want to talk about some of that today. Uh, I think it's going to be an exciting and interesting conversation. We have individuals today with us who have background in investment banking and uh, portfolio planning. And so we just want to allow them to share some information with you today that will prevent some of us from reaching that stage of frustration. Miss Dyer is with us uh, today and uh, Gerald B. Rogers and uh, Dr. Craig Bythewood is with us today. We want them to just go ahead and take a few moments to say hello before we begin. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome everyone. Once again, I'm just excited to be here with each and every last one of you all. So let me just say hello to our broadcast, to our listeners with the new 904 rejoice.com facebook we're live so go ahead and share this on your social media i want to definitely thank you bishop my business partners but you know as we begin to have this conversation about your retirement this is the be your own bank hidden in plain sight our broadcast and so as we're talking today just a little bit about myself for those of you all who might not know who tasha m geyer is Yes, I'm U.S. Army major retired, but when I retired, I became a licensed financial advisor. And so then, of course, now we are helping individuals globally around the world learn how to be their own bank. And so I'm just really excited to be here with each and every last one of you all today. Yes, and that's exciting. Uh, yeah, Dr. Bifewood, can you say hello to everyone? I certainly can. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Craig Bythewood, a.k.a. Dr. B, a.k.a. The Finance Doctor. And it is always a pleasure to greet this audience. And I think a little historical perspective for today's topic is also relevant from me. So I finished with my Ph.D. in finance and economics when I was 26. But when I was 24, I started doing personal financial planning. So that is almost 30 years of seeing this topic firsthand and understanding the difference between what we can do as in, from an empowered mindset versus when we listen to the institutions that currently run the world. Glad to be here today. Hey Amen. And, and uh, there's Gerald B. Rogers has just uh, uh, came back on the screen. I want to give him an opportunity to say hello. Thank you so much, Bishop. And uh, I'm excited definitely for our uh, listeners via Facebook and the 904 rejoicecom network. We are absolutely excited that we have the privilege and the honor to not only share this information via social media, but throughout the entire world. And I'm absolutely excited uh, to know that, you know, money answer of all things. And uh, a lot of the challenges that we experience in our, lo our, our households and things of that nature is because there were never any really pertinent conversations uh, to, to instruct us, uh, but, you know, in, in its entirety. So to be involved and be connected with individuals such as yourself, uh, Dr. Bythewood and Ms. Dyer, uh, and the movement that we've now been able to uh, put together. Be On Bank is a movement. It's an experience. It's a philosophy. And one of the things that we know that in many instances, you know, we have a desire to have dreams fulfilled uh, when it comes to pursuit of, you know, things in that nature. Uh, but one of the one of the challenges that many face is not being in the proper position to, to capitalize on their ideas. And when someone else is controlling, you know, the funding of your dreams, uh, we want to be in a position to alleviate and eliminate some of that frustration, because 
uh, where there's where 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 the vision is, then the provision will be made, and we're going to be able to help our listeners today utilize their mental capacity in order to expand their financial uh, wherewithal. And so that's what I'm excited about uh, reconnecting some uh, and reintroducing some terms that we have taken to heart of, of knowing what it means. So once again, to our listeners, I need you to share this information via social media, Instagram. Uh, and we're excited. So back to you, Bishop. Hey, man, thank you, uh, Brother Rogers. And we're excited about what's going on. We're excited about this information that we have today. And before we jump right into it, uh, I want to ask Ms. Dyer if she would read uh, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse uh, 2 and through 4. Uh, I think it's an... Absolutely, absolutely. So what it says is, what can I do to help you, Elijah asked. Tell me, what do you have in the house? Nothing at all except a flask of oil, she replied. And Elijah said, borrow as many empty jars as you can from your friends and neighbors. Then go into your house with your sons and shut the door behind you. Pour olive oil from your flask into the jars, setting each one aside when it is filled. That's a passage that kind of reminds me of the topic we want to talk about today. We want to talk about that frustration of being uh, at retirement age. This lady here, husband was a, I guess we would say a federal employee because she worked for the, he worked for the king and he died. And uh, his widow is now looking at what he left behind for this family, her as an older widow to live on. And she discovered that she didn't have very, very much. She didn't have enough to pay his, all of his debts. And the debtors came and they were threatening to take her sons, uh, to repossess her sons, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that it, it, she was in a bad condition that, that she, she had to sell her children in order to pay her, the debts that her husband left behind. And he had a good government job and uh, still did not have enough to retire on. Ms. Dyer uh, texted me a, a, a article from a magazine, and I'm gonna let her tell us about that article and, and what did that, I think something must have uh, jumped in her spirit when she read it. And so uh, she's been uh, making sure all of us understand what that means. So we just wanna share with the audience. Can, can you start out, Ms. Dyer, kind of share with us what you're what you let, let me let me, let me jump in here real quick, even before she does that, because I, I, I even wanna add to what you just said and. I, I want, I, for, for understanding purposes, I want us to be able to take this, 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 this story today and really, really um, understand that this is what many of us are experiencing in our friends, our neighbors, and our relatives. But if, if she could, before she uh, dives in, I, I definitely want to set the stage properly because we want to make sure that no longer from this point forward, people are victimized by their lack of understanding, their lack of information. So if she could pull up that, that same passage of scripture in the Good News translation, and I, I want to put some hot sauce and some, <laughs> um, and, and some, some Tabasco sauce on how important this is. And our listeners, you cannot walk away from this conversation today and not take advantage and engage in this information. So if you could read uh, that same passage of scripture, but in verse one in particular, it, it's very telling on how this is a sense of urgency and uh, it, it, we have to take action immediately. Good news translation, please. Got it, I got it. The widow of a member of a group of prophets went to Elijah and said, sir, my husband has died. As you know, he was a God-fearing man, but now a man he owed money to has come to take away my two sons as slaves in payment for my husband's debt. What shall I do for you? He asked, tell me, what do you have at home? Nothing at all, except a small jar of olive oil, she answered. Go to your neighbors and borrow as many empty jars as you can, Elijah told her. Then you and your sons go into the house, close the door and start pouring oil into the jars. Set each one aside as soon as it is full. Not, not only was he a, had a government official, but he's always also a ministry leader and a preacher as well. So this message is universal and, and definitely I want to make sure for a point of emphasis, we really understand. And I'm sure many of you have gotten a picture 
of your current circumstances and situation, but we do have solutions for you today. So Ms. Dyer, go ahead and tee it up and uh, educate us, empower us, speak to us. Uh, <laughs> well, okay, so as we started out this broadcast, one of the things that I just stated is that I, when I retired from the military, I became a licensed financial advisor. And so understanding that I am literally the person that you would sit down with to do your retirement accounts. I'm the person that you would sit down with to plan for your future. But we often say, when you know better, you do better. When you understand the reality and the truth behind it, then you do what's required, you do better. And so for me, myself, I made a transition. I literally made a transition and I'm here now where we're educating individuals on exactly what to do with their income, what to do to plan for retirement. That's literally what we're doing now. And so I've often said, because I mean, it was just so heartbreaking for me, you know, because when you really look up what it takes and what's required to quote unquote properly retire, you know, that's just not the way to go. That's just not what it is. And so, you know, how much you're going to need to put up was you know what's available and then of course having to plan out for all of the years we hear so many different things the rule of 72 you know about you know your money how much the percentage that it grows each year but the, the heartbreaking reality is what we talked about last week and the week before about hindsight being 2020 well that's what happens to most individuals at retirement age and so for myself what i couldn't do is allow my name to be attached to one of those plans because that they're not looking at the system that we've signed up to you know that system that says i'm going to give you my money and i can't touch it without a penalty now why who signs up for that you know but that's what society told us was a good idea but yet at the same time, you know, when we, when you back plan it just a little bit, you can, you, you know, when you start, when you actually walk in, in that world, you know that these banks and institutions are using our money, but yet we can't touch it without a penalty. And so I was actually reading and I'm going to show you the magazine, you know, and I've read it in more than just here. So, you know, I just want to be clear, but it was just something in this retirement guide that I was reading. And so I, you know, we did a training about a, a year or two ago, and then now to actually see it coming full circle, what is being called is the new retirement plan. It's being called the new retirement plan, and that new retirement plan is that when you reach 65, that's when they're telling you to get a side gig, a side hustle. When you reach 65, you, you need to plan for about 30 years. But when you reach that time, it's, it's now you need another job, or you need something to have disposable income. And so what they're doing is trying to paint a picture instead of saying, you know what, society, what we've been selling you, what we've been telling you doesn't work. They're trying to paint a picture instead of just ripping off that Band-Aid to let us know that it doesn't work. So now they're just trying to paint a picture to kind of prep you for you needing another job or your own business at 65. That's what's happening now. And so what we're here to do is say, you know what? No, absolutely not. No, sir. No, ma'am. This is not it. We are not going to operate in hindsight. We are going to lean forward. You know, something we always say in the military, lean forward in a foxhole. We're going to lean forward and plan now and not operate backwards. And wow. that's why you have to learn how to navigate and, and participate in your own rescue. You have to. Mr. Rogers, you got anything to say to them that you, you an investment banker, you understand the process. What can you share with us? Well, yeah. Yeah, I and mean, even when we're talking about retirement, you know, it, it's just we've been absolutely uh, miseducated because the word retirement is, is it, you know, it simply means that at, in the United States specifically, it's when the, uh, and it's generally speaking around age 65, when the individual permanently leaves the workforce. That, that's, that's really the, 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 the definition in the context of what we're talking about. But we all know Let's think about it. The average person, uh, when they when they talk about their daily function in their formative working years, the average person has difficulty in making it off 100% of their, their income, right? So when you think about the word retirement, that simply means in most instances, they're going to remove a third of your income away on the average. And, 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 and we're talking about now, this is 2021. There are very few 
uh, retirement systems that actually uh, give you the opportunity to maintain 100% of what you were making in your working year. So that for me, that's just a math problem. And, and why is it that we've bought into that ideology knowing that now as we're speaking in this topic manner, you know, the average person has to end up working again. And even from a context, uh, we see here in this, in, in Second Kings, the gentleman, he was employed, he was working, and he was serving God. But at his demise, he did not have enough revenue that his family can contend. And even during that biblical time frame and context, the woman's resource was tied into her husband. And obviously, the, 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 the boys was too young because they couldn't work because they would take up and be able to do that. So what position are we leaving our children in, giving them a foundation to build upon? And when you think about it, it says train up a child in the way they should grow. And when they grow old, they won't depart. But what, what, what information are we talking about? So no longer do we need to be led to believe that retirement is based on age and tenure, right? It's mm. based on your ability to have your, your income supersede your outcome. And that's what the focal point has to be, what we need it to be, and why this information and what we're sharing is so important with the Be Your Bank movement, being in a position where you're in complete and total control of your personal financial narrative. Well, now, uh, just want to back up just a little bit, because Ms., what Ms. Dyer and her colleagues would come in and tell you is, we, you, we can afford to live on, on, on two-thirds of your income because you don't need a car anymore, transportation anymore. You, you don't have to buy gas. You don't have to do this. And that kind of makes up for the, the lesser of the one third income. And, and it makes you feel good when you, when you buy that policy. Now, well, I'm going to tell you, let me, let me jump in. And that's all I'm trying to get in here. And then, so, because, because you're right, you're right. That's, you know, and I, I have to take ownership. You're absolutely correct. Because that is the conversation, but that works back in the day. It worked before because we've transitioned from a defined, you know, where, where now you have a defined contribution as opposed to a benefit where the companies that you worked for really contributed to your retirement. And so the financial security that we look for in retirement age, you know, people are going to be disappointed because before we could look for that and we would have that because those companies provided that, you know, the gut. So now that people are looking for the government or for a company, they're going to be significantly disappointed. And I know we have Dr. Bikewood on here and, you know, he's been that consultant. He's been that, C, you know, the CFO. He's done those things with companies. And so, you know, he definitely can add some clarity, at, you know, just as far as that defined contribution and benefit and the changes that it has for the individual, because no longer is a company saying, you know what, we appreciate you, you know, we, we really appreciate you. Um, here's a retirement plan. You have to participate in your own rescue. And what's happening now is because companies made the shift, the government made the shift, but we didn't make the shift. That's why so many individuals approaching their retirement age are in for a world of disappointment. Man, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I, I, I just, I love the book of job, right? And the book of job says, well, obviously, you know, I'm being facetious. The book of job says, <laughs> the latter shall be greater. And the latter can't be greater if we don't understand what we're talking about today, because it, it, it pains my heart, honestly, though, we have so many individuals that have to find themselves to uh, they have health care that is increased. Uh, they have to make that decision or do I take my medication or do I feed myself? So, Listen, the book of Job, Job says that our ladder shall be greater. And how do how do we make our ladder greater? We have to understand, like the son, sons of Issachar, we got to understand the times, and then we have to know what to do with the information and apply the information. And I know Dr. Bythe would bite to get in here because I know we've done so many uh, 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 seminars together, and this, this is his heart is his heartbeat. So I know he's jumping off the Richter right now, Dr. Bythe would. Yes, sir. Let me first make sure that I'm still audible. Can everyone hear me okay? Absolutely. So when I heard Mr. Rogers say that this is a shame, it made me think of the word scandal. 
which made me think of the show Scandal. And although we love the fact that it put a Black woman in a, a power position, what that show was about was creating a narrative for whatever the situation was, whether it was a crime or a mistake, whatever it was, what's the narrative? So let's very quickly go back on the historical narrative of how we got here. Social security, it was a government program created to allow people to be able to have a defined benefit retirement plan. Then the numbers began to show, well, this really isn't going to be enough. So then we decided to come up with the, a focus on the retirement plan. So the narrative became, here's why you should invest in your retirement plan. Well, the way in which it played out is that now that it was optional for companies to provide it, and now that it's optional for employees to take advantage of it, the numbers began to go down. So we have individuals that have access to a retirement plan, but weren't taking advantage of it. So then we began to notice that as we went to Walmart, there would be elderly people greeting us. We began to notice as we went to McDonald's, as we went to other places, elderly people would be there. So now we changed the narrative to, well, actually retirement plan means that you can get a side hustle. So we're literally creating a narrative as a society to explain what's happening. And this is the part I really want everyone to walk away with. We as individuals sometimes do the same thing, and let me prove it to you. As a young academician who is also a CFO, who is also a, a financial planner, I created the narrative to get people to invest in their retirement plans that you have to take advantage of this. I talked about the compounding. And I talked about the fact that if you start when you're 25 years old, you have the ability to be able to have more than if you start at 30. But those are still narratives that are based on investing for 30, 40, 50 years. So as I'm listening to this, I'm getting excited all over again for the Be Your Own Bank movement. Because think about it. In my narrative of convincing people to take advantage of a retirement plan that's pre-tax, that can grow tax-free, I'm saying to them something that can earn them between 9 and 11% per year. But now, we, as was hidden in plain sight, have access to a better alternative that allows us to make three to 5% per trade. So think about it. My narrative made sense because it was better than our alternative. It's better for you to invest in your retirement plan than not to. It's better for you to have a retirement plan than to rely on social security. But all of those narratives pale in comparison to where we are now. So we're gonna to continue to have this dialogue and talk about why retirement plans are such an important thing for us to understand as a society. But whoa, that our shoulders can be so relaxed that we know that the alternative we have right now is literally 100 times what we had prior to these articles being written. Now, uh, I want you guys to explain something to me. I was in the barber shop the other day and this guy sitting in there and he said he had a job, he had a, he had a, uh, a retirement plan that the company uh, put money into and he got fired. And he had to walk away with nothing because the retirement, the company said that retirement belonged to them. How does that work? There's a vesting period. And companies are aware of the vesting period. And just like an owner in the National Football League will take action on a player before the, the meaty part of their contract takes place, it's very common for individuals to make decisions on key level executives before the vesting takes place. Because if you're not there long enough, 
you get to keep the money you put in, but I get to keep the money I put in as, a, as an employer. So that's part of the process. Wow. And the thing about that is you invest years uh, that you could have been investing somewhere else. You can't get those years back. You can get the money, but you can't get those years back and the time that is required for like when Doc, when uh, Ms. Dyer mentioned the rule of 72, you know, the time it takes for your money to, to double and triple and, and whatnot. And, and so uh, that's not a good plan for me. Uh, uh, I don't think I would want to do that. And so we, this lady, I want to look back at the scripture. This lady uh, starts off by saying what she didn't have. And uh, many times when you talk about people participating in, 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 in the forex market, people begin to talk about what they don't have. And, and they, they come, come at it with a negative mindset about what they really possess and what can happen with what if they understand how to use what they, what they possess and how it can multiply. Uh, what's your conversation with people when you help to try, to try to help them understand that whatever you have, you can use it uh, uh, to multiply and to, uh, to work past these limits that have been placed on us by our current retirement programs? Well, I personally, you know, when you, when you, it's really shift the mindset. And so what you want picture right now, I am so glad that, you know, it's, it's actually in black and white where you can read it and you can see it. But the reality is, is you have to be willing and open to receive it because if you'll blindly trust someone, and this is what we have to get away from, but we blindly trust someone based on a title. You know, we blindly trust someone because I can't tell you how many times, you know, when, when, you, when I go over and I talk about the credentials or what I did or, you know, what I was able to do, that someone is just willing to blindly trust. And then the reality is, is when they hit that retirement age, they're not able to. So if you start painting that picture for individuals, I mean, you already hit the nail on the head. Walmart greeters, you know, personally, I didn't want my grandmother to do anything like that. And I don't want to do anything like that. You know, when I reach those retirement years, those golden years, I want to live my life on my terms. And so it's really about helping them. Do you want to go from what you're doing now to where you're highlighting receipts? Or do you want to be the one if, you know, delivering packages for Christmas, you know, those sorts of things. Or, you know, what is it that you want to be able to do and what is it you're looking to be able to accomplish? So if you can, that picture right there, and it's really that shift of mindset. And so just like we talked last week about legacy, you know, we talked a lot about legacy and we see in that entire shift that's happening, you know, with our children where we had individuals and it's really no excuse for anybody because from six to 84, you know, Last week's broadcast, Ms. Brownlee is 84 years young, and she is up on the call. She's educating herself. You know, she is doing what's required for her legacy, for her to be able to leave it for, you know, to pay it forward for herself and for other individuals in her family to come behind her. And that's what it's all about. You know, it's about being able to live my life on my terms. And so when you start seeing, well, how many people do you know that was not able to retire? Or how many people do you know that were told they had to work a few more years before they were able to do, you know, what they want to do or actually able to walk away from that job? And even when you look at the military right now, because we know I retired from the military. So even when you look at that, they're shifting. Thing. They used to be 100%, you know, that defined benefit. And now they are even making that shift to where you have to contribute. And I want to ask a question too. You said you might not get that, but you can get your money back. You can't get your time back, but can you really get your money back? Because the reality is, is when you make those investments, they're still subject to the market. And if 2020 did not wake you up, you know, some people live through the housing crash. So now some people have done the housing crash as well as 2020, the COVID crash, right? So some people have lived through both and some individuals only experienced COVID. So if those things right there, looking at your portfolios, looking at what you've done, if that didn't wake you up, I don't know what will because nobody, you know, nobody, whether you lost a job, you lost some income, you lost some retirement benefit, you lost something in your portfolio. 
So nobody should be willing to say, well, I'm just going to sit back and wait for this thing to build back up. It's still subject to the market. You don't own it till you cash it out. That portfolio, that paper looks real good, but it's still subject to the fluctuations in the market. And we want to be able to take advantage of the market, no matter what it's doing, buying or selling, regardless. That's what we want to be able to do. And because that's what institutional investors do. And uh, give some numbers to substantiate what Ms. Dyer is saying. So since March of 2020, since the pandemic hit, retirement plans in the United States of America have declined approximately 63%. If you wow. take that not that end of 2020 level of retirement plans in the United States of America, and you then ask yourself, how long would it take? to get back to the pre-COVID amount, it would take between 15 and 18 years to get back to that amount. Who has that kind of time? Exactly. Wow. And, and now I heard on Financial News today that uh, uh, the billionaires and the trillionaires uh, did well during this year, that uh, two thirds of the wealth now belongs to them. And that the, the one third, the rest of us are fighting over that one third. Uh, you know, they said that the, the market did well during the COVID. And I think we can testify what was happening in the market. And, and so uh, uh, those who are out, left outside of that loop and, and our way of doing the same thing that the tree has are doing with their money and investing their money, uh, I think duplicating that would be a, a great idea. And so how is that possible, Mr. Rogers, for us to do the same thing that those trillionaires are doing? Well, it, it's possible because th there's an old adage that says if you, if you uh, want to do and be successful, find somebody that you want to emulate and become the best copycat <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and do what they do. And, and it, it reminds me even of the movie, uh, one of my favorite movies, Trading Places with Eddie Murphy. Right. And it's all about exposure, right? Because once again, we've had this on many broadcasts. We're talking about education, but it's really what you're being educated upon. So there's a set of rules that govern wealth, right? And we now have to make sure that we are studying the principles of wealth and let that be a part of our daily functionality. And that has to become a priority. And, and I, I'm kind of reminded of of what Paul admonished the, 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 the listeners when they were listening, he says that uh, to, to the Berean church, you know, they search themselves. And I think Ms. Dyer alluded to it. Yes, they, they were happy to hear from Paul the apostle, but they made sure that they verified what he was saying to be true. And that's what we have to now begin to articulate to our family, to our places of fellowship, our community, and let people know that there's a set of rules, right? And we now have to play by the rules of the game because there are three types of people in the world. Those who are in the game, those who watch the game, and those who don't know the game is being played. And this is once again why this uh, movement is so important because you have individuals like yourself, Dr. Bythewood and Ms. Dyer, who understand the rules of the game. Now we're just listening and hoping that the ears are ready to receive information because there's a, a value and benefit of sharing this information so that those individuals who are, who are devoid of the information, they now can be in control of their financial outcomes. That's a very true. And so uh, that reminds me of my book that's out of print, Off the Bench and in the Game. Uh, you know, it's, no, it's not time for you to sit back and spectator, spectate, but to be a part of this financial game. And so we have we offer an opportunity for, for us to participate in a game that uh, uh, deals with over six billion dollars a day. Trillion, 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 trillion. 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 That, that's that robber sum. Yeah, we robbed a lot of people. <laughs> that's a lot of game. That's a, that's a lot of game that, that we missed out on. 
And, but, but not, and to, to add to that, you that's just the foreign, foreign exchange market. And every, you know, everything right now is sitting around cryptocurrency. So you, you want to add an additional up to five trillion dollars. So you're talking about nearly 11 trillion dollars that yeah. people and I got an opportunity to participate in. In between meetings today, I made some money on Bitcoin. So it's a, uh, it's a great opportunity for folk to, to learn to participate. And, and I, didn't, I, I didn't own any Bitcoin. I just traded on it. And so that's the beautiful thing about it. I don't have to earn it, own any of this stuff and pray that it, 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 it increases in value. And uh, that's enough. I said, wow, is this cute? It's like watching a, that Eddie Murphy movie talked about, uh, a Richard Pryor movie talked about the trapezoid, you know? You know, it's, it's just, <laughs> you know, you can't believe this stuff is true, you know? And, and, and it's hard to believe when you haven't been exposed to the opportunities that are out there. You haven't been exposed to handling money the way the billionaires handle their money. And so this is an opportunity for us to jump on that same train, that money train that they're riding, and and uh, and participate, you know, with with uh, a minimum amount of uh, of input in cash. And so I'm excited, excited about that. And so it's not a time to be sitting back talking about what you don't have, and you're seeing what you don't have because you don't understand what you have. You have this woman didn't understand the value of what she had in her house. She didn't understand the value. The, the, the prophet said, what do you have in your house? She said, I don't have but. And, and so now the prophet's going to show her how what she has can be multiplied over and over again. And it all depending on her attitude about going in and utilizing the information that the prophet gave her. And, and so that's what we have here today. We are giving you some prophetic information about how you can multiply what you already have in your house. Good God Almighty, I'm gonna run around this table now and, and shout for you. And so- Go ahead and shout, uh, Go ahead and shout, huh? it, out, shout it out, shout it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, Bishop, I think, it, I, think it, I think it's very important that even what you just said about she was focused on what she didn't have, but then there, there, there was a point where she listened and took action. And, and so I, I did have a question for Dr. Bythewood. Uh, how can we make this simple for people to engage in this process? Because they may be concerned about what they don't have as far as the information. But you know, I've heard you say often on the difference between trading versus investing, realizing that a person doesn't have to uh, be concerned about how well a company is doing. Can, can you kind of elaborate on that? About. Sure. So first of all, in that concept of trading versus investing, Bishop Rodison hit on it. Because if you make a decision to invest, it now becomes about hope. I hope this choice does well. I hope this company, I hope this vehicle does well. So it's one dimensional in that A, it's only that particular vehicle, and B, you only make money when it's going up. But of course, in our environment, when we have an opportunity to trade, we're simply riding the wave. We're simply making money off of the movement. So all we're asking the market to do is move, and it does that every day. So by putting ourselves in a position where we can understand that it is the movement of the market rather than your choice in the market that allows profit opportunities. Wow, we really wow. put ourselves in a perfect position of strength. And you I gotta feel say that, it again, Dr. Bythewood. You gotta say that again. That, that, okay, that right there. I'm, I'm writing that down. I'm, I'm okay. giving you credit the first time, but okay. go ahead. So <laughs> rather than be in a, in a situation where, you know what, I don't know what the heck I said. <laughs> 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 in the anointing. Because think about it, in this scripture, he told her to get the oil. Because he knows the, the anointing is in the oil. So oftentimes when I'm speaking in that anointing, it just leaves me right after it comes out. Luckily, we have a recording. Let me refresh you. You said it, it versus the choice of the market. You just need to be aware of the movement of the market. Yes, that's it. So rather than having to focus on our choice in the market, all we are dealing with 
is the movement in the market. And you think about it, your choice may or may not be right, but your, the movement will always happen. It will always take place. So it's just a, a better, safer, wonderful place to be. And again, it's not new. That is why our book is called Hidden in Plain Sight, because institutions have been doing this for years. Amen, and that, that's so very true. Now, uh, the other thing about this woman is she set her own limits. The prophet didn't tell her how many uh, barrels to go out and borrow, to store and go out and get as many as you can. And uh, so she's, when, she's, when she stopped borrowing, she set the limit on what, how much her blessing would be. And, and so uh, that's, that's sort of what we're dealing with today is this information is as valuable to you as you make it. You know, some people get information, they just sit on it. But if you, you really take this information and really uh, take it to heart and give it your all in all, then your reward will be just as great as the effort that you put into it. And so this lady, only every barrel that she brought home, the Lord filled. And so there was no limits. She set her own limits. And so what you do with this information, you set in your own limits about the, 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 process, the, the progress that you can make as far as your retirement is concerned. And so let me um, let me just add to what you all have so eloquently stated. I mean, I'm is because you're right, and because society has taught us that we need to invest, and I think that that was just the perfect question, the perfect topic, the perfect answers, because that's literally what society has taught us. And you know, I can't tell you, you know, when you talked about the conversation or you know, enlightening individuals is literally because I can't tell you how many times we get asked the question, you know, well, how much do I need to invest? Or can I just put this or what would I put it in? Or, and, be, and that's just the norm. That's, that's that normal question. Matter of fact, I was asked that question this morning, you know, so you tell me where to put it. No, I'm going to show you how to do what the banks do. We're going to show you how to do it in institutional investors do because what they do is ride the wave. So when you think back to COVID, because we were just talking about that, and you think about those stats that Dr. B just gave us. I mean, just think about that for a moment. But yet we have individuals that are literally economically unbothered. And when we say economically unbothered, that means that COVID, what happened, it didn't phase them, it didn't move them. And so I don't need what it takes to do an investment. I don't need to buy a hundred shares of anything. I don't need to do that. I even hear people right now, when you look at Bitcoin hit, you know, you mentioned you were trading Bitcoin and hit 42,000, but then it's dropped back down significantly, you know, where it's looking like it might hit below 30,000 again. And, you know, so people are like, well, I sold it, but then I'm gonna buy it back. I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna do the dip. And because that's what society has told us. But last year in March, in March, when it dropped in March, when the market dropped, We've had people made more money. They have, I mean, where they set themselves up. We had people that were not a part of the unemployment of COVID. They, they were unemployable because they knew how to ride the wave of the market. It's a difference in being unemployed and unemployable. So that's a huge difference. And so that's what we teach you. You're not subject to the market. You understand how to ride the wave. So no matter what the market is doing, whether it's going up and going down, going sideways, we are in profit. So, and, and, and that's the beauty behind it. it. It does not matter. So those days of buy, hold, and pray, they're over. You don't have to buy something, hold on to it while somebody else gets to use it and just pray that it rises in value. And the reason why you have to pray is because it's still subject to the market. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's key, what you just said, as a result of COVID. Uh, everything's being done differently now. We just don't do stuff the same way. Church is different. You know, the way we shop is different. My, my sister, uh, I said, I, said, I said, where did you get that uh, ginger juice I had at your house? She said, I got it from Amazon. I'll buy you some and you'll have it tomorrow. And I looked outside my door and there it was. I didn't leave the house. I didn't do anything. She just had a drop at my front door. And so the way you shop is different these days. The way you do things. So why not banking be different? Why not the way we handle money and handle our banking issues be different now? Because there's more of a personal uh, 
involvement in, in your business affairs and you don't necessarily have to trust a stranger uh, to uh, put your livelihood in the hands of a stranger who you may who may have your best interests at heart and may not because you don't really know who you're dealing with you know they were talking about all the guys who were uh who were not straight up that were at guarding the white house some of them were not straight up and so they had to eliminate them and so you really don't know who you're dealing with these days and so uh, the best thing is is being able to learn and to understand and to handle your own uh investments that's Mr. Rogers, i see you thinking real hard over there <laughs> Go ahead, Dr. Bythewood. I know you that I know point you that it. yes, that point that Bishop Rodison just stated literally makes itself. But I want to talk about how perfect the selection of this scripture is. Because we are four leaders, four individuals that operate in ministry, and we're providing some advice. And in this word, the prophet is saying, go utilize your neighbors. Use those that are close to you. Utilize those that are around you. It takes a village for you to pay thy debts. So that is literally what the Be Your Own Bank movement is. It is a large conglomeration of neighbors led by some individuals with servant hearts for the Lord, saying, let's work together collectively so that we can all pay our debts and put ourselves in the position of wealth and abundance that God has always had stored up for us. So it literally is the perfect analogy for what we're doing as a, as a movement. Wow. That's a great word, Doctor Doctor Biden. That was I heard that was a prophet. That wasn't that wasn't the uh, the the, the, uh, the businessman. That was a prophet speaking out, coming out. And so we're just glad to receive that word today. That's a great word for our community that we can learn to work together and trust each other and uh, believe uh, and, and get an understanding of the truth and and be able to act on it. You know, faith without works is dead. And so we have to act on those things that we understand to be true. Ms. Dyer, you, you were ready to say something before I interrupted. Oh, no, not, not, not to that, because, I mean, it didn't need any elaboration. But mm -hmm. um, just, but, I mean, when you really think about what Dr. Bythewood has said, or even the scripture, you know, she had, what she had was enough. And so just really caveating off of what he just stated, is that that's where we miss the mark is I hear so often, you know, that, okay, well, I need to wait until I can do this, or I need to obtain some more, or, you know, this is that misconception, you know, that so many people have, or what about diversification? And when you really think about what wealthy people do, and one thing that I love is what um, Robert Kiyosaki said, is that when you talk about diversification, that's not a strategy for wealthy. That's a strategy for individuals that are truly trying to avoid risk, but it's really, is it, that's not even a reality that, you know, if you want to do something. So a safe investment, a safe thing is not going to obtain what you want. So diversification is a losing strategy. It's not for winners, it's for losers, it's for losing. And that's the position that it puts you in because that's not what wealthy people do. Wealthy people actually focus, they understand that they want something and they're willing to do what's required to go get it and, and not always looking for that safe route. They're not always, well, I need to get more. So just imagine, had she said, I need to get more, then just think about it. She would not have been in position where she would have been able to keep her children. So she would have had, you know, if she wasn't obedient. So you take what you have and you grow it. You focus on the skill set. You you are obedient, and you learn it. And voila, then your your wealth is going to obtain. I mean, read the rest of the scripture. It, it's there for you. Well, it's, it's exciting. I just imagine. Can you imagine the desperation that she had, uh, having to sell you your baby? Lord have mercy. Just think, if I had to sell Helen and Carol, uh, yeah. boy, that'd be something. Boy, that'd be I'd be really going through something. You had to sell days. You laughing and smiling. You had to sell days. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, that'd be a, that'd be a, a terrible feeling. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on, I got to do something. Lord, you got to feel these pictures. I feel them right now, not after a while, but right now, I got to pay these people. I don't even ask anybody. And that's the, but that's the mentality that we have to have because think about how you set your children up. You're really selling them. That's what's happening. You're setting them mm -hmm. up for failure if you're not willing to do what's required. You're setting them up for failure. So that's really the same thing. That's what you And, you're I, and I, I was sharing with an attorney today because I was talking about what these civil courts do to us. And uh, we were talking about the civil courts not a place for poor, poor people because you can't afford to file a fees. And I said, what they do is they take our wealth and our children have to start from zero like we did. And anytime every generation has to start from, from zero, the wealth is stolen from them. And so this is a way where our children do not have to start from zero. And uh, especially with this information, young little 11 year old, and then Deja and your son, that information, they have that information and that understanding. And so they can always use that information to make money. And so, you know, that, that, that's, that's the positive about, about, about this is get the information if you don't do anything else. Get an understanding. Take the time to get an understanding. And that's what uh, Proverbs talk about. But all that getting, get a understanding. Once you have an understanding, I don't care what happens, nobody can take that from you. Uh, yes. Dr. Prophet, Prophet Bywood, are you still there? Yes, I am. Yeah. And so... Uh, the information, how long does it take to it really take to, uh, uh, to gain the appropriate understanding that's necessary to be able to navigate the market? What, what, is, what is required? Well, I'm going to answer that question in two parts. And the first part is that we have created an infrastructure where if you dial in, if you jump in, if you plug in, you can really follow this and understand it within 14 to 21 days easily but you got be kid that that time frame oftentimes takes longer because of our mindset and i was just sitting here saying how can i weave the mindset point into this conversation and here it is i really want all of our listening audience to think about what we're doing right now we're having a conversation about an institutional issue that has manifested itself in alternatives that have not served the public. But we always, as a unit, as a movement, talk about how important it is that we have the correct mindset. I am taking a forgiveness class right now, and we are undergirding this conversation with the word of God, the ultimate document of forgiveness. So I want you to think about this. When I was doing one of the modules in this forgiveness class, it said that there were three entities or, or three types of forgiveness. And in my mind, there are only two. You're either forgiving a person or forgiving yourself. I didn't have my glasses on. And I kept wondering, what is the third type of forgiveness? So I went, got my glasses, came back to the screen, and the third one was forgiving organizations and entities. So if we're going to put ourselves in the right perspective, put ourselves in the right mindset to take advantage of this great perspective and knowledge that we're discussing right now, we have to forgive the institution for putting us in this perspective. Do you realize that when you forgive, it affects your health? And if Olympic athletes are now taking forgiveness classes because it's shown that when you forgive, it allows the athletic ability to go up. They're jumping higher the less they have to forgive. So I'm saying all this to say this. We now can speak to how you do one thing is how you do all things. So by us, instead of having an attitude with the government for putting us in this spot, let's forgive them and be so thankful that God sent us a movement where we can see what has been hidden in plain sight. Let us forgive, let us forgive, let us forgive so that we can walk in our wealth and abundance. And I have to echo that because forgiveness is, is so, so, so necessary. Ms. Dyer? I was just saying, let the church say amen. 
Yeah. You have to you have to have that mindset. I mean, if you're holding on to something, are you really going to be able to absorb it? I mean, seriously, you you're not. You you won't be able to. And so you have to release so you can absorb. So remember is is if you're angry or holding on to something, the government is going to keep since we're talking about the government right now, they're going to keep doing what they do. So they don't care that you're upset. They don't care. You just, they're going to keep doing what they do. You have to release it for yourself. And that's, I mean, whether it's the government, a person, whoever it is, you know, our parents were not sharing information that they didn't have. I mean, so many different things that can hinder your progress. And that's why you have to go back to the mind of a child where you're just ready to absorb and, and you're intentional about what you want to do for your future and for your success. Yeah, well, that's very true. Go ahead, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, I think that's very powerful, Dr. Bythewood. And, and I'm thinking about even in, in what you just uh, shared with us about forgiving. So, I mean, the widow woman, she had an option to hold, but that was not her concern. She was not concerned about the cause of it. She was more focused on how I can remedy this situation. And, and, and she went to the man of God and she was willing to execute based on his instructions. And, and I really think about the fact that when we talk about diversification and, you know, there's there's a thought out there about multiple streams of income. But when I look at what the woman did, she followed the instructions to the T and then she was able to now live off the rest. In other words, she was able to establish one stream first and then that stream was able to take care of the rest of the needs. So I wanna make sure that even as our listeners are listening, you gotta understand, you gotta establish one stream first. You gotta establish one stream first, but it's all about the action that we take when we are in pursuit of the information. And it was revealed to her because she followed through. She followed through. And sometimes we gotta make sure that we follow through with the initial instruction that was given and we have to see it through. So we want to make sure we start, but most importantly, we have to finish the instruction in its entirety. And when she finished the instruction, she was able to eliminate any pain that she was experiencing, and she was able to live off the rest. That 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 was very very powerful. Ah, so she was coachable. She was coachable. <laughs> <laughs> she was coachable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Now, now here's what, what, what we want people to do. Now, we understand that, you know, we want to be responsive to our audience. And so when you watch this for the second time, we want you to, uh, Mr. Dyer, I'm going to tell you where you can send your questions, how you can get, get your questions to us. Yeah. And then we'll, be, then we'll be happy to respond to them in, in the very near future. Mr. Dyer, you want to close us out? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so I'm excited because tonight was a very, very important topic. And so what Bishop is actually saying is, put your questions, go to our website, beyourownbankmovement.com. Make sure you visit our website, send your questions to us. Let us know what questions you want answered and we'll follow up with this because this information is just too powerful and it's too important. This is information that we need to know. We have to be able to take control of our future. And while you're on that website, speaking of coachable, you know, we definitely have a e-coaching program that we launched because once again, this is the year of transformation. And so how is it that we're going to make sure we reach the masses is through that coachability and that, you know, and, and making sure that we're able to reach everyone in our sphere of influence. It is so very important. And then also for further information and further clarity, our book, Be Your Own Bank Hidden in Plain Sight. Dr. Bythewood mentioned the book and the reason why we wrote this book. And so this book is written for you. And each and every last one of you all can definitely grab a copy of the book, send us your questions, but make sure you visit our website, beyourownbankmovement.com, beyourownbankmovement.com. And we definitely will answer your questions next week. We'll actually be in touch with you before then. You know, we don't have to wait till next week, but we definitely will do a follow-up to make sure that we get each and every last one of your questions answered in this totality to bring you full and complete understanding so you can properly prepare your families. 
pick up a copy of the book while you're there. We love you guys, but also visit the website because tonight we train. We're just not going to say, hey, here's some information, but we train where we are literally showing you and helping you navigate the markets to where you really, because when we say be your own bank, we mean literally. So we'll be live tonight, myself and Dr. Bikewood, where we can really help you understand and see exactly what is what we do and what's required for you yourself to be your own bank. Love you all. We're so excited. The newrejoice904.com, our Facebook listening audience, each and every last one of you all, Spotify, follow us on Spotify, Be Your Own Bank Movement. All of this information that we're sharing with you is definitely here for you. We love you. This is going to conclude our broadcast. So until next week, we'll see you then. And do not forget to drop those questions and pick up a copy of your book. So with that, this is going to officially conclude our broadcast. Love each and every last one of you all.